All right, we got an Accord in the shop that needs a new cooling fan. Let's see if we can't get this thing fixed. This is what we're working on today, the 2004 Honda Accord EX with a 2.4 liter engine. Now, I've already done some testing and confirmed that this radiator cooling fan right here is not working, and so we got to get it replaced. Now in order to fix this, we could replace just the motor itself or we can buy an entire assembly that includes both fans and motors. Now we can go to Honda and just buy the electric motor that went bad, the cooling fan motor, and just for the motor itself it's like over $300. So it's really cost prohibitive on an older vehicle like this. So I decided to go aftermarket and we can get the whole complete assembly including both fans for a lot less than Honda wants for just that one motor. And there's the part number for this vehicle. Okay, if we look right there, coming all the way across, that's going to be our cooling fan assembly, and that's what we're going to be replacing. And of course, it comes with both cooling fans and our reservoir. So in order to get it out, we're going to have to disconnect some stuff over here and over here. And we want to work safely, so I should mention this vehicle's cool, so we're not working on a hot radiator system or right next to it. All right, first thing we'll do, this is kind of in the way, so we can just pop it out of here. It's just a plastic little cover. And now we'll disconnect these fans, because on some models, the fans can come on even with the key off. So we don't want to be sticking our hands in there and accidentally have that happen. So we'll make sure to get these unplugged. There, now they're both electrically disconnected. Right now we'll just disconnect this and we're going to have to disconnect this radiator hose. We could try to work around it, but I don't think that's going to work. So we'll just move this clamp back and disconnect this hose. I do have a, a pan down there to catch some of the coolant. But if we're careful, we should be able to set it up like that and not lose too much coolant. And you can see it's peeing on us a little bit. So we'll just squeeze the hose here. Try to get some out so it'll stop that. And I don't care where you put the pan. It always seems like a little bit misses it. Now I'm just going to take a quarter inch ratchet, 10 millimeter socket. We're going to knock these three bolts loose. And I think because I'm right here. I'll just take the reservoir out too, because it's the same thing. They're all the same size. Now we have to deal with all the electrical wiring that's pinned to our shroud. These are clipped in. We want to try to avoid breaking them if we can. And for that connector right there, if we just peel this back a little bit, you can see it right there. All we got to do is pinch those tabs and then it'll pop free. I'm just going to try to reach down there with some of these. See if I can't unclip it without breaking it. This stuff right next to the radiator is pretty brittle out here in the desert after years. Well, at least that one came free. And there's a shot of it with it out. You can see the tabs right there. Typically, if you can just reach in from the other side and just squeeze it, they pop free and we don't break them because otherwise you'll just break these plastic pieces right off. And if we look down there, I think there's at least two more clips we got to deal with on this side. And if we look at the other side, we got, man, get out of my way, light. We got another connector right there, which, if you look, light is not cooperating. It's right here. And then we have another connector down below that, way down there, that we got to disconnect over there. So basically, we got two on each side we have to contend with, and hopefully, we don't break them. If I can reach around this one down here, we should be able to just press up press up on that tab right there and lift this up and off there so now we can well we can disconnect this now I need two hands 
or we can wait for a little bit, but at least that gets us free. Now we just got to deal with that clip that's right there and the two on the other side. All right, I was able to use two hands and just reach down there and disconnect it. So that one's good to go. You just press in the tab. And I think if we just kind of lift this out, there's feet on the bottom. If we kind of just pull it out of those feet, it'll give us some more room so we can reach in there and unclip them from the back side. All right, without scraping myself up too bad, I'm just going to reach down here with some pliers and unclip it. Oh, and then I drop the pliers, of course. I know it's hard to see because I can't really film and get down in there. But it's going to be the same thing. we got to get that connector right there and just squeeze it and pop it out. There we go. Alright, I got that last one. Honestly, these stupid clips are probably the hardest part of the job. Um, I've tried using sockets where you slide it over the end of the clip, you know, I haven't had good luck on these doing that, but you could always try that, find a socket the appropriate size, like seven or eight millimeter, and slide it over the edge, but a lot of times you drop the socket and then you gotta go find it. All right, now if we got everything disconnected, we can fish it out. If we forgot something, well, we're gonna find out pretty fast. And there we go, just be careful of this. This little nipple here, don't break it off. Now that our fan assembly's out, we can have a better look at things. It's a good time to check out our radiator, make sure we don't have any issues. If you notice, there's a hole right there, there's one over there, and there's one right over there. That's where our fan assembly kind of sits in. Those are the feet where the feet go, so it just sits in place, and that locks in the bottom, and then it just comes over and then bolts up over here. So that's why you unbolt it and then we can pop it out and get it out once we get all the electrical connectors taken care of. Well, seeing as we're right here, that gray connector down at the bottom, that is connected to our cooling fan switch. And basically when the coolant down there hits approximately 200 degrees, give or take a little bit, there's a switch inside there that closes and it provides ground to both relays that control our fans. So if we're having an issue with both fans not working, that would be a prime suspect right there. And that would only be on 03 and 04 models. 05 and newer, they replaced that with a coolant temperature sensor, and that would be uh, the second one, so that would be ECT2. But on these older ones, that's gonna be a switch that controls our fans, and so we definitely wanna make sure that's working if both of our fans are not working. And of course, we always wanna compare our new parts to our old parts make sure they're the same. Now, if I remember correctly, um, there were a couple different manufacturers for these Accords as far as these fans are concerned. These were made by Denso, and so you want to replace them with, you know, a similar build. I don't remember the name of the other manufacturer, but I'm fairly confident that that one has fewer blades. So if you look at your blade configuration and then there's there's less than what you see here, what is it, we got five and seven, I think. Um, then it's probably the other manufacturer and you would want to get that version instead of the Denzel one. But just something to be aware of. Now while I'm thinking of it, there's the feet on the bottom. So we just got to make sure when we put it down in there that these feet lock in place so that the bottom is locked in. As far as transferring any parts, I think I will pull that um, coolant reservoir off so that way it gives us a little more room. And then we do have to transfer over this little clip for our wiring harness. We'll put that right there. This should just be a screw we can pop out. We'll bring it over here and we'll put it in the same exact position. No, nope, we'll fumble it around because we're holding the camera. And it should just kind of lock in place like that. About the only difference I can tell is Honda has threaded inserts here and here. And on this TYC aftermarket, there's threaded inserts here. They did not put one right here. It's just a screw that goes into the plastic. Not the end of the world because 
that reservoir locks in here and here and that's just to keep it from going up but it is different all right now we're ready to drop this back into place while I'm thinking of it see the way these fan blades are angled they're angled in a way so that they should be spinning this way and forcing air towards our engine and basically pulling it through the radiator and condenser if these are wired wrong they'll spin the wrong way and your car could overheat so always you know when you replace them make sure these things are spinning in the direction where they're pulling air that way and we just want to make sure all three of those feet land in their place and it feels like they did. Yeah, all three of them in the place. And if we did it right, then these bolts will line up perfectly. All right, now that we got it in place, we want to make sure that our wires are on the correct side. We're not pinching anything in between here. Looks like we're good. And we want to just reach down here and just tug on it and make sure we can't pull it that way because then we know our feet are locked in. And plus, yeah, if our bolt holes line up perfectly, then we're good to go. Alright, now that we've got everything lined up, we'll go ahead and put these three bolts back in. I went ahead and taped up this connector so it'll be in a little bit better shape than when we found it. We'll go ahead and get them snapped back in. Got that side all snapped in. That's what this side looks like. Everything went back exactly as it's supposed to. And same thing over here. What's nice about these fan assemblies is they use the same connectors as the OEM fans, so they just plug right in. Now yeah, let's we'll clean this up a little bit. Reconnect our hose. And we'll put our clamp back. Now we want to put this in the same exact position as it was before, otherwise we could create a leak. That looks pretty good right there. Alright, now we'll go ahead and reinstall the reservoir. I'm going to use the original Honda one. I like them better. I don't think there's anything wrong with that aftermarket reservoir, but I like the original Honda ones and so we're going to keep it. We should be able to just drop it into place, reconnect it. The only thing different is it's a screw right here instead of a bolt, but otherwise it drops right in. And it, this one has a washer and it's a 7 millimeter head if you're curious. So you need a 7 millimeter socket. There it is, all buttoned up. There are two washers on there, a small one and then a larger one, so don't lose them. And don't over tighten it, otherwise you'll strip out the plastic and you could probably get away with using a bigger screw if that happens, but try to avoid it. All right, we'll get this back in place. This just pops over a rubber grommet like that, and then there's two plastic clips, although we're missing one, we only got one. I went ahead and added a second clip right there to keep that in place. Alright, now I'm just going to refill the system with Honda coolant and then bleed it using this spill-free funnel. And it always looks green in there, but it's blue. And while I'm bleeding the system, I'm going to hook my scan tool up and watch what the engine coolant temperature sensor is doing, make sure it looks good. And if we look at our Engine coolant temperature sensor, 75.2 degrees, so it looks correct. We're sitting at about 78 in the shop. And then um, 
our intake air temperature sensor is at 80 so these should be fairly close when you start the vehicle if they're way off then you know there's probably an issue and before we do anything we'll just verify that both fans work I turned the AC on engine off Looks like they're both working we'll just verify that they're blowing in the correct direction and they are all right we got a fix And I'm just going to watch this ETC sensor and watch it climb. We should see a steady climb. And then when it gets uh, on these, probably between 205 and 210 degrees on this sensor right here, those fans should kick on. So we'll be looking for that. And you can see we're at about 150 and climbing. That's air coming out. All right, our temperature has stabilized around 185, 186 for a few minutes now. That typically means that the thermostat has opened and the coolant is flowing. So this is a good indication that our thermostat's okay and a good indication that our ECT is working properly. And of course, while it's running, we're keeping an eye on our connection there, make sure it's not leaking. All right, there's one more thing we gotta check. We've got to make sure that these cooling fans come on when they're supposed to. So we've got to verify that that cooling fan switch down there is working. In order to do that, because the temperature has stabilized at around 186, we need to bring the RPMs up and get this uh, engine a little bit warmer. Just raising the RPMs up so we can get that temperature to rise. And you see it's starting to go up now because it was stuck at 186 pretty good. And this will fool a lot of people. They'll wonder why, hey, how come my cooling fans aren't kicking on? It's because we the thermostat and the cooling system is doing its job so we got to raise that RPM up a little bit so we warm the engine and uh, get it hotter. Now I'll let you watch it. Usually when we start getting over 200 degrees on the ECT between I don't know anywhere from here to 209 or so those fans should kick on. And I believe, I, it's hard to tell, but I think the fan just kicked on. Now we'll watch, see if that drops. You see it's dropping. So yeah, our temperature, or our cooling fan switch did its job. It turned the fans on, dropped the temperature, and then it went off. So it'll regulate that temperature between 195 and about 203. If we kept it up at this speed. If we drop our engine speed, that will go down to, you know, 185 or so but looks to me like this system is working properly. They're definitely working properly. Well, it looks like our ECT, our thermostat, our switch and our fans are working perfectly. And if we look at our temperature gauge, you see how it's a little bit below halfway? That's exactly where we should be on a properly operating Honda system. And we always want to top the reservoir off to the max line whenever we service the coolant and of course while it's running and afterwards we want to look underneath make sure we don't have any leaks well that's it for this one I think we got a confirmed fix uh, once it cools off I'll bring it out into the driveway and hose off that engine compartment where we made a mess but other than that I think she's ready to go back to the owner and as always if the video helped you out you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching